Amen. Praise the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. We serve a mighty God. I have no that doubt about that. Bwana asifiwe. If I'm able to see you here, I believe that it is God. I believe that it is Jehovah Jireh who provided. I believe it is Jehovah Nisi who fought for you battles. I believe it is Jehovah Shama who was there by your side all through the week. Praise the Lord. I really thank you for coming to the house of the Lord and taking some time for us to be able to pray together because it is only through prayer that God can enable us to win battles. I want us to finish our session on prayer. Finish our session on prayer. We've been looking at uh, prayer for the past two weeks. And the reason as to why God led us to look at prayer is because we need to grow day by day in the avenue of prayer. Having members who don't pray is a big load or burden to the pastor. It is very important that as members of the church, we see the importance of prayer and apply it in our everyday life. So that even when God gives you a calling to be a worship leader, to be a choir master, to be an evangelist, to be a teacher, it will be easier for you to move. You will glide. But if you don't build an altar of prayer in your life, trust me, you will not go far. Receiving a calling is one thing. And working on that calling or stirring up that gift is another. Paul told Timothy to stir up his gift. You can't stir up your gift by remaining silent on God or the giver of that gift. You have to start it up through prayer and also adding fasting onto it. And God will make you a better instrument. The God will make you a vessel of honor that he will be proud of. Praise the Lord. So this teaching on prayer is not in vain. It is meant for each one of us to grow in prayer. So I will really appreciate if you take out your book, your pen, not your paper, but your book. And your Bible, make sure if you're having a book, you have a book that you normally write every Sunday. Don't change books. Because when you change books, you lose track and you tend to misplace. Make sure you get a, a, a good book, like 100 pages or 120, then you'll be writing your notes there every time you are in the presence of the Lord. So we looked at the types of prayer. Which one can you remember, Sister Mary? The prayer of supplication. Another one? Prayer of? The prayer of thanksgiving. Another one? The prayer of faith. Another one? The prayer of intercession. Good. Another one? Prayer of? Prayer of omission. No, 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 no. Another one? Warfare prayer. Another one? imprecatory <laughs> praise the lord imprecatory is the prayer whereby you pass judgment over your enemy and there are so many of them in the book of psalms chapter 7 and so on and so forth another one prayer of the one that you normally do every time whenever you pray no no uh -huh. repentance praise the lord so these prayers, you find that you've been doing them from time, to, from time to time. It is only that you didn't know that they are categorized. And so it is very important for you to know them and know when to apply them. When somebody is praying, you can tell this person is doing imprecatory prayers. The prayers to destroy the enemies. This person is doing warfare prayers. Eh? Counter-attacking whatever the enemy has done against you. And whenever we are praying, we are simply 
talking to God. When did people start to pray? It was when Seth gave birth to Enosh. Enosh was the grandchild of Adam and Eve. That is in Genesis chapter 4 verses 26. When Enosh was born, people started praying from that day. Amen. So, when we are praying, how do we say it? How do we say our prayer? Do we say it with arrogance? Do we get to pray with ignorance? When we are praying, we need to pray with confidence and belief that he will deliver. Praise the Lord. We need to pray with confidence and belief. We just see now, Imani, that God will do it. There are times we pray and the need that is standing before us seems to be so big according to our eyes. You meet somebody with cancer and you are wondering, now this one, where will I start praying from? Praise the Lord. You look at yourself, you don't have a job and you have rent to pay and you ask yourself, now even if I start praying, I know according to my own understanding money has got to come through the salary or through the wages. Praise the Lord. You lack faith and confidence in him. That is why Hebrews 11.6 says and without faith it is impossible to please God. And he adds by saying he who comes to him must first of all that he is Praise the Lord. You must first of all believe that God is Lord. You must first of all believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And as you seek him, you will develop confidence in him. When I start working with Alice or working with her, I will know her to a point. I will have confidence in her that when it comes to certain matters, Alice can do it very well. But it took a step. I had to take the step of first of all partnering with Alice. Praise the Lord. For you to have that confidence and belief in God, you must first of all have a relationship with him. You must have a fellowship with him. And you have that fellowship when you pray. If you're having fellowship in a certain church, you have to be in that church on that particular day. And we see in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verses 12, it says, In whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. I repeat, Ephesians 3 12, In whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. Faith is everything when it comes to salvation. Faith is everything when it, when it comes to life. You have to believe in somebody. You have to believe in something for you to move. And so the boldness that we acquire and the access that we have gotten enables us to approach his throne of grace and mercy with confidence. Read for me uh, Hebrews 4.16. Hebrews 4.16. Let us when approach the throne of grace with confidence Confi confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Praise the Lord. We are told to approach the throne of grace and mercy. Praise the Lord. But we are not just asked to approach it like that. We are supposed to approach it with confidence. Believing that we shall obtain whatever we ask from him. So many people pray and say, God, I need a husband. I need a wife, I need a job, I, I need a child. But when, you, but when you look at them, there is no sign that these people have confidence in, in God. People who have confidence in God, you will tell by their lifestyle. These are people who breathe about Jesus from morning until evening. These are people who share about Jesus. These are people who seek after the face of the Lord day in, day out. These are people who who will not engage themselves in foolish talks, flattery talks, but they will engage themselves in talks that build people, in talks that will encourage them tomorrow. That kind of confidence can only come through faith. And as we finish this topic on prayer, you must memorize Hebrews 11.1. 1. 
that faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. When you are trusting God for something, you need a substance to give you mileage. You need a reason to trust him. And that is faith. You have not seen it, but you are simply trusting him. There are times you can even go to church. You don't have bus fare for going back. But if you have faith, the Lord will provide. There is a time I gave you a testimony of a certain brother that I knew was my neighbor in high rise. And this brother had issues. He had financial problems for a very long time. One day he shared with me the way he walked from Westlands until high rise just going to church. Not to visit a friend, not to pick money, but to go to church. And for a number of years, this brother was broke. People knew him as a broke fellow. But I remember in the year 2011, the Lord visited him. He applied for a scholarship to go to Sweden. And he was given full scholarship. And he was even given a job to do. Whereby he was going to be paid an equivalent of 120000 The last time I spoke to him, he was doing an attachment with the UN. The Lord lifted up this guy to a very high standard. I'm sure even the ladies who knew him before... Even if he approaches me, I can't. But right now, he sought. And if you could sit with this brother, he was loaded with the word. Scripture after scripture. He was a teacher of the word. And one day, the Lord visited him. What kept him going all those years, even to walk on foot from Westlands to where Memorial Hospital is, just to go to church on a Sunday and many of us have bus fare we still come late to church the prayer for an effective the effective prayers of a righteous man availed much and he added faith faith took him through so when you pray you need to do it with confidence and believe that he will deliver whatever you ask it may appear as a big mountain but you need to understand when you place a request the lord will answer it but he will take his time before he delivers that blessing to you number two you need to say or pray with joy that he can deliver you need to pray with joy that the lord can deliver there are people when you hear them pray kama mnaishi kwa nyumba ya mabati you may wonder if this person has a grudge with god anaomba lakini anaomba kwa asira ni kama anagombanisha yule mtoto ambaye alimtuma pahali na hakurudi on time praise the lord anaomba ni kama mungu kama ange kama angekuwa na mwili kama hii yake it happens. Praise the Lord. We pray with a lot of bitterness, lacking of faith, and you are asking God, why, why am I going through all this? I go to church every Sunday. I sit on the front pew. I pay my tithes. I give my offerings. But God, when are you going to visit me? Because I don't have that feeling in me that you love me anymore. Praise the Lord. But the Bible says in Romans 10, 17 that faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. If you are coming to church is fruitful, you will develop joy with time. Even if you don't have that particular thing for now, you will develop joy because in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And on his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Psalms 16.11 You can read Acts 2.28 It says, You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. This is more, more or less the same as Psalms 1611. When you develop a deeper relationship with God through prayer, whereby you pray every day, morning, evening, you pray like Daniel, you pray like Cornelius, who are known to be praying every day. 
you will develop a good relationship with God. And even when he's not answering your prayer right now, this month or this year, you will still go to him with joy. Going before the Lord with joy is a sign that you have faith in him. Because you will go to him with a prayer of thanksgiving. You may have asked the Lord for a number of years, God, I need a child. I am barren. God, I need a life of fruitfulness. And then you realize two years have gone by, you haven't gotten that child. Two years have gone by, you haven't gotten a proper job. It gets to a point whereby you get tired of being angry with God and you enter into a mode of thanksgiving and you start telling God, I thank you for that wonderful job that you have prepared for me. I thank you for creating a position for me. I thank you, my master, for opening doors where there seem to be no way. I thank you, my master, for allowing rivers to flow in my desert. I thank you, my master, for allowing me to see ways in the wilderness. Praise the Lord. I remember way back in the year 20, 2010, I looked at my place of work and I realized there are no avenues of promotion, not unless somebody leaves. There was no opportunity for a vacancy. And I started telling God, Father, create a position for me. Even if I, I am not able to see a vacant position, let them create a position simply because I am your child. Let them create a position for a child of God. I prayed that prayer for one year. One as if you will. And every day when I go to that door, I would say, thank you, Lord, for creating a position for me. And one year later, January 3rd, 2011, they had created a position for me. And how, how did it come about? The HR had a niece or has a niece whom he really wanted the niece to be employed. Naikaonekana, this gentleman has been here for one year. This girl cannot be employed while this man has been here for one year. So God created a scenario, a divine arrangement, and I came in. Praise the Lord. So what we are talking about are not rocket science. They are not things that cannot happen. They have been happening and they are still happening. When you go before the Lord, at times, go with joy and thanksgiving. And start thanking him for that particular thing you have been asking for a very long time. Never get tired. Because when you go to him with joy, you will realize the anger goes away. And faith builds up. Praise the Lord. The third one is, when you are praying, you need to pray with expectation that he is going to deliver. You need to pray with expectation that he is going to deliver. When you leave your house to go and meet your cousin or to go and meet your friend because you have a need, you go there because you are seriously in need and you have faith that this person can assist you. That is why you leave your house and you go to him or her. And you present your need before that person. And some people normally add, I came because I know that you are the only one who can help me in this matter. Praise the Lord. You have simply expressed faith as you are making that prayer of supplication to this brother or sister. God expects the same. That he that cometh to me must first of all believe that I am and that I am a rewarder. Not a forsaker, but a rewarder of those who diligently seek me. Praise the Lord. If you need something, don't pray once. Continue praying even if it takes you three years. Continue praying. Praise the Lord. Because we have learned different categories of prayer. And if you have the Spirit of God, you will be led by the Spirit to know when to apply to apply. A certain category of prayer. There are times you will go before the Lord and you find yourself just getting into a mode of thanksgiving. You are not asking him the same same things, but you are simply thanking him. I gave you an example, or the Bible gives us an example of Abraham, whom after he met with God who promised him a son, Abraham waited for 25 years and the Lord was still visiting him almost every day. It's when God appeared now in chapter 18 and told him next year around this time Sarah will get a child when you come before the Lord being expectant you are expressing faith to him and at times he tells us you've asked me for this thing 
did you come to me as a last resort or you came to me because you believe that I am praise the Lord the Lord wants you to come to him because you know that he is and besides him there is no other rock he doesn't want you to fall back onto him as a rebound because things didn't work with so and so so I've turned to you Jesus because things didn't work with my parent he is not paying school fees so I've turned to you what if the parent starts paying school fees what if the backslidden boyfriend comes back to you loaded with money will you still remain with me praise the Lord so you need to go to him with faith knowing that he is God and if you diligently seek him he says that he will reward you when you are helping your child to start walking he will be standing there and you are standing next to the child the child is stretching the hand so that you help him or her to walk but you take a step back one as if you will is when you get hold of him praise the lord that is how god is he allows you to go through the waiting period because he knows and you know very well every time the child makes a step the child becomes bolder every time he adds another step he becomes bolder and that will add on to the boldness of this child that i can walk on my own praise the lord and every time that you wait upon god he is watching you. He knows that every day you make it, you say, oh my God, I thought I was going to sleep hungry. But I've seen that he is Jehovah Jireh. Nobody can shake me. Nobody can, can belittle me. And he says, wonderful. He moves back again for day two. He moves again. And at the time that the trial becomes too tough, he provides an escape route and helps you because you were expectant as you followed him. Praise the Lord. When you go before the Lord, don't go when you are double-minded. James 1.7 says that uh, somebody who is double-minded is unstable in all his ways. So you will not only be unstable in the things of God, even in the decisions you make outside. At your place of work, in marriage, you will be unstable. And the Bible says such a person will not receive anything from the Lord. Praise the Lord. I know as you are seated here, you have a need, a very pressing need. But, you, but when you go before the Lord, go with confidence and belief that he will deliver. Go with joy that he can deliver. Go with expectation that he is going to deliver. Praise the Lord. And you tell him, Father, I know that there is no one else who can attend to my need apart from you. And I am sitting right at your feet. I won't move an inch. Because Job did not move. Even, even when the trial was too much. Even when the servants kept on coming with negative reports. That the cattle have gone. That your children have died. That this and this has happened. Job did not move an inch in his faith. Instead he rose up and blessed your name. And so what does the Bible say about prayer? What does the Bible say about prayer? Some of it we saw it last week when we were looking at different categories of prayer. What does the Bible say about prayer? The Bible says, if you read the book of uh, John 17, Jesus prayed for his disciples. The Bible says that pray for each other. Pray for one another. Not unless you have love in your heart, it will be hard for you to pray for your brother or your sister. Those of us who are married understand it better. When your spouse has really angered you, do you find it easy to pray for them? Can you ever think it's hard? You can't. No. I'm saying, Yanni, if you're thinking it from a carnal mind, it's not easy. Especially if you send your husband to go and pay Brandon's school fees. You gave him 40,000. Will you go down to him and say, Father, thank you for this wonderful husband. Before you say that, you will have gone mad for one hour before you come back to your senses. Praise the Lord. But when you read the book of First Corinthians, I believe chapter chapter 13, uh, we, we see Paul telling the church of the Corinthians about love. First Corinthians, does look, yes, chapter 13, verses 4. It says, love is patient, love is kind, love is not jealous or boastful, 
It is not arrogant to rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It, it does not rejoice at wrong, but rejoices in the, in the right. Number seven, love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. You realize that it takes the love of God in your heart, not the worldly love. The worldly love at that time goes through the window and it becomes hard for you to pray for your enemy. It becomes hard for you to pray for your brother who has offended you or even your husband or your wife. But if you have the love of God in you, you will get to a point whereby you will go down. Because the Bible says love endures all things. And if you read 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 9, the Bible says that God is love. And him who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So if you really have God in you, you will be able to forgive. You will be able to endure and continue praying for the loved one. You will continue praying for the sister who has offended you in church. You will continue praying for, you, for your brother. You will continue praying for your enemies. So the Bible encourages us to pray for enemies. To pray for one another. Philippians 1.9. Paul prayed for the Philippians. The other point, what the Bible says is that pray with faith. Hebrews 11.6. We have looked at that. Pray with faith. The third one is pray with worship and reverence. Pray with worship and reverence. Psalms 99, 5 and John 9, 38. The book of Psalms says 99, Psalm 99 verses 5 says, Extol the Lord our God, worship at his footstool, holy is he. If you want to learn or to get a template on worship and praise and how to bless the Lord, you can read the entire book of of. David, that is the book of Psalms. David kept on worshiping and praising God. Whenever we worship and we praise God, his presence normally comes down quickly. It takes one who knows God deeply to be able to worship him. Because you'll be talking of his attributes. You'll be talking of how he's great. You'll be talking of how he has done wonderful and marvelous things that you have seen in your life, you've seen in your family, you've seen during the ancient days, the days of the Israelites. You will remind him of how he is great. He opened a door where there seemed to be no way by departing the Red Sea. Praise the Lord. He parted the Red Sea right before their eyes, something that none of us could ever think. There are times, I'm sure, even in, in your life, or in your family, the Lord has visited you in a way that you never thought he could visit you. And so, we learned that there was one category of prayer, and that was praise and worship. That is the point that you don't ask him of anything, but you just tell him, God, you are great. God, you are wonderful. God, you are mighty to save. You've done great and mighty things. You have delivered me from the hands of my enemy. You healed me when I was sick. You are the I am, the that I am. You are El Olam. You are El Elyon. You are El Shaddai. You are Jehovah Nisi. You are Jehovah Rapha. You throne him with greatness. Praise the Lord. And when you do that, you attract his presence. And if at all there was something that you needed from God, he will do it so fast. But you can't worship the Lord in truth and in spirit if you're lacking in spirit and you don't read the Bible. You must make the Bible your best book that you read every day. The time that you, that you used to spend in the world reading novels, you can now bring in the Bible. And you can read your Bible when you're going to work. You can read it lunchtime. You can read it on your way home. Because you can never have time or you cannot, as in you cannot always have time to be able to read the Bible. But you can create time. Let us look at what is the purpose of prayer. What is the purpose of prayer? We know that prayer is a direct access to God. We get to communicate to God through prayer. It is a way that we fellowship with him. We keep in touch. We get not the mind of God. We get not the perfect will of God over our lives through prayer. And so to say that prayer changes things is not as close to the truth as saying prayer changes me and then I change things. The prayer that we normally make first of all changes you and then you change things around you. God has established things so that prayer on the basis of redemption changes the way a person looks at things. Prayer is not a matter of changing things externally, 
but one of working miracles in a person's inner nature. When we pray to God, after understanding the importance of prayer, God uses that opportunity to work on your inner self. Praise the Lord. Because whatever we see outside comes from the inside. And if somebody affects your inside, they will automatically see the fruits outside. If you find somebody who had dreadlocks and has been coming to church, and after enough Bible teaching, this individual comes on Sunday with a well-shaven head. It means something was done on the inside. A word was spoken to him consistently. Or a word was just spoken to him and this person comprehended the importance of changing. And what you are seeing outside is as a result of the change that took place on the inside. When you pray to God, you ask him for a job, you ask him for money, ask him for greener pastures of, or greater opportunity. The Lord takes that opportunity to start working on your inside. There are things you will learn from the pulpit because pastor is preaching. But there are things you will learn by yourself through the experience you get with God. And it is normally through the waiting period. You pray to God and tell him, Father, I need this thing. That point the devil comes to you and tells you the pastor is lying. He has been praying for you for all this month. You have never gotten a job. This church is not the correct one. I've been in this church for around two years. I've never had a breakthrough. But you realize... This person is not well connected with God. So that he may take time and ask God. As much as I'm not getting this thing. And I've inquired from you if I'm going to the right church. You told me yes. God, what is it that I'm doing that is not right? And the Lord will speak. Praise the Lord. You will pray consistently telling God, search my heart. Is there something? Is there a sin that I'm committing? Tell me Lord. And after some time. After teaching you patience, the Lord will tell you, you are going astray in this area. You are in the procurement department. You are not doing things the correct way. You are stealing from the company. Praise the Lord. Maybe you live where there is a Nairobi pipe, Nairobi water pipeline. And you decide to steal water from there. The Lord tells you, this is the thing that is hindering your blessing. Praise the Lord. God, I need a husband. Why isn't this husband coming? Maybe the problem is with you. It is through prayer that the Lord starts revealing to you things that with time, he changes the inner you. As he's preparing that husband for you, he also has to prepare you as the lady. He has to work on your attitude. He has to work on your personal hygiene. He has to work on you so that you may know how to cook him he has to work on your character so that you may know how to receive your husband. Not talking to your husband carelessly, but we always get the mentality that the problem is on the other side. I am ready. But let me shock you. Sometimes it is you who has the problem. The husband is ready. Sometimes the job is ready, but the problem is with you. You learn from the house of God. You should be coming early. You come late. God wants you to go and represent him at that place of work well, not as a late comer. And he tells you, I'm not giving you this job because you are arrogant. I'm not giving you this job because you are a late comer. Everywhere and anything, you are a late comer. And so he tells you, work on it. Take your time. Even if it is seven years, take your time. So prayer helps you as an individual, number one. Prayer does not change God, but prayer changes you and me because of the revelation we get in the prayer room. Praise the Lord. That is why you see, the more somebody prays, the more revelations they get, the more they get refined if they are obedient. Because they come to realize a lot of things around their lives. They come to realize a lot of things around their families. And they start experiencing breakthroughs through obedience. Did it come easy? No. It started by you erecting an altar of prayer. I normally tell people, I have once lived a life whereby I am free. I am not working. And God made me understand, at such a time, he gives you the opportunity for you to, to be able to know him more. You can't say that you don't have time to pray because you are free in the house. You can't say that you don't have time to fellowship with him because you don't have a job. And so it is not that he's not going to give you a job, but he's giving you the opportunity this time for you to know him more. 
Because a time is coming after you have gotten that job, you will not have the time to read the Bible. You will not have much time to be able to pray. And that is when for the first time, God enabled me to pray for seven hours. I used to pray daily from 7 a.m. until 1 p.m. Daily, daily, until I saw Kumbe, it is possible for somebody even to pray for eight hours or even 10 hours. God answered my prayers. The pastor did not appear at my doorstep to tell me that from today henceforth, make sure that you are prayerful, pray for these much hours. But I just read the testimony of a certain bishop who normally prays for seven hours and I said, wow, I have never heard this, but I, I can try. And I started slowly by slowly reading the scriptures, getting into worship and praying as I walk around the house, proclaiming. I walked from around the house claiming things over my life people over as in blessings over people's lives and I remember one of the prayers that, that I told God was I pray that God give my mother the grace to work even up to 65 years let her not be retired by 55 and I made that prayer for a very long time and after coming back from my studies I came to learn when I was watching news that they extended the retirement age from 55 to 60. And then I told God, you mean one person can pray and the government can spend sleepless nights discussing that matter of somebody who is not even currently in the country, outside. And now that she's about to retire, I'm sure you have heard in the news, they are scrapping off that. The effective prayers of a righteous man are very little much. It is only in the closet of prayer. The time that you create alone, you say no to friends, no to relatives. This afternoon, it is me and God that you'll be able to know God on your own. And you'll understand the power of prayer and how it can change your view to things. How it can change your understanding. How prayer can make you start looking at things from a bigger perspective. And you will also understand who God is as you progress prayer. Let's be on our feet. We shall continue next week on why do we need to pray when God knows everything.